South Africa's first choice for news. This is ENCA. Welcome to the Mudisa Network. On the show, we look at the implications of the panel review on state security report and the public challenge by Sipopijana to Sandile Zungu. One of the first commissions to be appointed by President Cyril Ramaphosa was the high-level review panel to investigate the suspected abuses within the intelligence services. The panel, chaired by Dr. Sidney Mufamadi, found that the intelligence abused resources, illegally spied on civilians and NGOs, and were used to fight internal battles of the ANC. More damning is the finding that former President Jacob Zuma and two other ministers were aware of these abuses and may have approved of them. Zuma has since denied this on Twitter and has also threatened to reveal all. And later, business leader Sipo Pichana has challenged president of Black Business Council Sandile Zungu to say whether or not he was complicit in the wide-scale corruption of the last 10 years or so. We will establish the matter of contention with Mr. Pichana and then later get a response from Mr. Sandile Zungu. Former Intelligence Minister Ronnie Castrells joins me to talk about the alleged shenanigans at the country's intelligence services. Castrells is also the author of the book, A Simple Man, The Enigma of Zuma. So he should know what we are talking about here this morning. And Mr. Castrells, a pleasure to have you with Thank us. You. Thank you. Now, this is a damning report about what transpired at the intelligence services. From your experience as former Minister, when do you think this breakdown started happening? Well, I saw the signs within six months of becoming minister in 2004, midway. And there were people who I knew from exile, from the underground, who I liked and trusted to some degree. I say to some degree because we had problems in exile in terms of the ultra-secrecy of our intelligence services and there were certain things that from the MK side, Joe Mudisi, Hani, myself, we, we, we objected. You know, Chris Hani said that he didn't know how the crowd would behave, the intelligence security, once we were back in the country. <laughs> he had that kind of doubt because we had a lot of instances where they were really um, overbearing, where people were detained without real cause, uh, where even this top command of MK couldn't get the facts. Um, so Chris Harney was on record for sounding that alarm. When I became minister, Mr. DC, 2004, getting into 2005, do you remember there were uh, a fake or hoax email saga? I remember that, yeah. And it shocked me because I began to see that this was coming from within the National Intelligence Agency. Uh, we began probing. The, the uh, emails were what we've come to see. The fake reporting, the slanders, the smears, and one saw that it was basically to reinforce Jacob Zuma's claims about a conspiracy by President Mbeki against him. It was absolutely clear. Uh, I'll come back to that because yes. The, yes. The, the alliance swallowed it hook, line and sinker when I blew the whistle. Now, let, let's just take a step back and try and establish what the intelligence services are supposed to do, what the purpose of the intelligence services Because as we discuss this, there are certain issues that I would yeah, like to probe yeah. and raise with you, yes. right? We've got crime intelligence, which is different and separate from the intelligence services. So yeah. what's the purpose of And then the there's the military intelligence yeah, as on well. Top of the, yeah, so, yes. so intelligence is meant to provide forewarning to government of the day, supposed to be non-partisan, whichever party is in power, to bring forewarning about threats that are arising which threaten the security 
and stability of the country and against the people. That's what it's supposed to do. Um, and if they paid attention to that, they would have, for instance, seen in the economic sphere <laughs> what the Guptas and uh, the Watson brothers, what Bosasa Guptas were all up to, capturing the state, siphoning off the funds, etc. Eyes off it. Why? Because instead of looking at that narrow focus, they were looking on this broad focus of political security and intelligence, which meant looking into your affairs, you as media, mm. looking into the right to know NGOs who were, were raising their doubts or questions about government, and into the affairs of people like myself. In other words, the ANC, the politicians, communists, the trade unions, and in the first place, not the opposition, which they shouldn't look into either, unless there's illegality, but factionalism, to look into the political grouping of the alliance to protect, to first of all, bring in Jacob Zuma, and then to go to extraordinary lengths to protect him. Now, the intelligence services are supposed to provide forewarning, right? early warning, so to speak, That's and it. even yeah. advice, I suppose, yeah. uh, to the policy makers, decision makers in the country about the threats that the country may face Precisely. in the future, not yeah. as things happen, right? So how much harm do you think South Africa may have suffered as a result of what the high panel probe found? You know, it's a wide range. People will immediately see the damage done in terms of the ripping off of the funds of the fiscus and of the state, money going into the deep pockets of, from Jacob Zuma to the, the Guptas and ministers, the corruption of government. But um, the other aspects in terms of the security, you know, there is the question of threats from abroad. Every country knows this, mm. that outside powers are interested in what's taking place and they resort to espionage. It's one of the key things that intelligence security services need to be aware of. When your intelligence services are so involved in themselves, they're not looking at that kind of threat. In all the years since 94, has there been one espionage agent caught? Nothing, zero. And yet, how many ministers, especially from the time Jacob Zuma was there, you remember Mahlobo and all of these guys, oh, foreign agents, mm. foreign agents mm. working for espionage, well, CIA. I mean, we, we, even, we even had a <laughs> minister of finance uh, fired and the other one, Yes. Uh, recalled, called back from yes. one of, on an overseas trip as a result of that. So yeah. Yeah, Exactly. Yeah. So uh, they, they raised that in order to smear people, but I wouldn't know the extent to which foreign agencies have been ha able to create inroads into South Africa because of this, what, what has happened. They must have been laughing in relation to what our people were up to, giving them a chance to get on with what foreign intelligence services are out to do. And but, South Africa is a country they want to know a lot about. Sure. And uh, Mr. Kastrils, so I have to ask you this question. I mean, not only were you Minister of uh, Intelligence, but you've been an intelligence operative yourself, as you indicated yeah. earlier on, and even authored the book that I mentioned in the intro, A Simple Man, The Enigma of Jacob Zuma. Mm. What did you make of his response to this report when it was published this past week? I mean, the high panel report. You know, it's so dangerous, the warning he gives. He says, you've opened a can of worms. You're going to regret it. And he says, and what kind of panel? Two spies on that panel. You know, this is one of the big cancers in our society where people willy-nilly when it suits them say 
Cyril Ramaphosa was a spy. Sidney Mafamadi was a spy. You know, whoever. I'm just giving names. Yeah. I don't mean them. But we know in, in, <laughs> there just was in Parliament uh, this, this accusation. Where are these facts? It's so serious when you say there's spies in the Commission or in Cabinet or whatever. Don't, don't throw these hyenas out in this way. If you want to really be serious about it, provide facts. It goes back, it's not the first time. This is part of Jacob Zuma's modus operandi. But and has anybody actually been proven? But let me ask, I mean, he, he's, he's a former president. He's not just an ordinary exactly. person exactly. making this accusation, right? Yeah. And therefore, he was privy to privileged information. Yes. Pro some of it probably exclusively to himself. Yeah. So it may be that he knows something that uh, many people do not know, including you know, from his days as an intelligence operative alongside you. I think he, as an intelligence officer or leader in exile, I have very serious doubts about his ability. And so have many people within the services. They scoff at it. Uh, there was the case of Tammy Zulu, who MK, Mudisi, Chris Hani, myself and others, were saying this man is an outstanding commander of MK. He might have made some mistakes, there were casualties, that was part of the struggle. Where are the facts that this man was a, a spy against us? Never forthcoming. In the end, the poor man was released from a year of 18 months dreadful detention and died within a few days. I mean, this goes back. Zuma has constantly um, put up a wall against talking about Tami Zulu. Um, if he's a president, you judge the president, the man, the woman, the minister, when they make a statement, Mr. Mudisi, you judge them on whether you've got confidence and trust, which you have or have not, depending on the record of the person. When Jacob Zuma makes these statements, who takes him seriously except an inner circle around him? Nobody anymore. He's totally lost credibility because of one misdemeanor after another. So you can only say, please, where are the facts? Put the facts there. Don't just say there are spies. It goes back to him from the time he was correctly dismissed by Mbeki because of his connection with the fraud and the corruption of the Shabir mm -hmm. Sheikh. Mm -hmm. Mbeki then well, dismissed him and uh, he started crying, conspiracy, there's a conspiracy to prevent me becoming president. I challenged Jacob Zuma. I don't come out with these things lightly now. It's on record. It was in the Mail and Guardian in those years to say, where is the conspiracy? Put it to us. Don't say there's a conspiracy. Anyone can say that. Where is it? Oh, no, 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 Comrade Ronnie. Not yet. The time's not ripe. The time was never ripe to this day for the facts. He just waves the red flag conspiracy to protect himself, and he's got the acolytes around him. They're less now, but my God, Mr. Mudisi, when he was president, how they all formed the circle around him yep. to protect him. Mr. Ronnie Kastrels is the former intelligence minister and our guest, and uh, we continue our conversation with him in a moment. Don't go away.